Howdy guys, welcome back to BIG Photography. This is Ben and this is going to be a little bit of a different video because we are not actually going to be doing any retouching. Uh, but we are going to be discussing something that I think is very important and has definitely helped me speed up uh, or maybe, I guess work more efficiently within Affinity Photo. So I wanna share those tips with you uh, after the intro. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's just dive right in. So my first main advice for working more efficiently in Affinity Photo and for any kind of uh, painting program in general is getting a tablet of some sort. Uh, personally, I am using the uh, Wacom Intuos, the small size. Uh, I found that I prefer the small size just because my hand does not have to move around too much. Um, I think if you're an illustrator, and some kind of like artist or animator, then definitely having a big screen where you can, you know, move your hand around, move your wrist around a lot really works. But I think for me, I just, I tried using a medium size one and I just felt too big. I was having to move my arm way more than I wanted to. So the small size actually is perfect for me. Plus you can actually remap uh, the area that you want to use on the tablet. So I think actually mine is remapped to actually fit the screen proportions of my 16 by nine, um, Mac iMac screen 27 inch iMac screen but uh, you can also sometimes even make it small say you only want to use this part of the tablet you can basically map it so you really don't have to move it all but that's my main thing is using a tablet now there's other few cool things that you can do when you have a tablet one for example this one has some um, buttons on top that you can customize to whatever you want so for example in affinity photo uh, this third button here I have it set to uh, merge visible so I can click on that and it's gonna basically merge all my layers into one brand new layer. The reason why I did that is because normally the keyboard command shortcut for merge visible is like shift option command E and you can look at it when you come to a uh, layer merge visible. And so that's just a lot of like keys that I gotta press and try to remember. So I assigned one button to that. Uh, this other button here, I use this for my export menu. I can just click on that and I can go boom, I can go straight into export. And I can set the resolution to how I want if I'm exporting for like Instagram or whatever. So that's just a really quick way to go straight into that. It, that way I don't have to come to the file, come down, hit export. It just saves me one keystroke. And because I'm on a Mac, I use uh, multiple desktops. I like working in full screen. So I use these two buttons on the left side to basically cycle through my desktop. So here's my uh, Firefox and my YouTube and my Affinity Photo. Here's Capture One and here's my desktop. So this is just a really quick way, especially since it's right here. It's really great if I want to remember something or I want to go check on YouTube, I can check on YouTube or I can go to my desktop and look at a file or check something in Capture One, go back to Affinity Photo. So I really like having these keys assigned here. And then, um, Another thing which I don't, which I actually learned about this recently, and I don't know why I never really did it, is using um, the radio menu that's built in with the Wacom tablet. So, for example, I have it set where when I press the pin, the uh, the little back, the second button on my pin here, it's going to bring up a radio menu. And so in this radial menu, I have customized the different things within Affinity Photo, like new fill layer, color picker, the healing brush, selection from layer, curves layer, create a mask, uh, frequency separation, liquify. So if I want to do a liquify thing, I can just come over here, click on that, and boom, brings me right into the liquify menu. I can do a curves, boom, there's the curves. And again, it just saves me a little bit of time where I don't have to come down here and go, where's the curves out? Curves is here. I can just come here and go, boom, curves. Here we go. Again, you can assign keyboard shortcuts to that, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But if you do have a Wacom tablet, uh, you can go into that by going into your, um, your settings, and you can go into your Wacom tablet little plugin thing. And here I've got Affinity Photo, and I have it set where the pin brings up the radial menu and then on the on-screen controls in your radial menu you can set all those buttons to be keystrokes and so for example if we do uh, like the frequency separation it's to a keystroke I think on this one my frequency separation is set to the backslash key named it frequency separation and that way when I click on that it should bring up it works just like that 
and now I'm in my frequency separation menu. And again, all of these can be assigned to keyboard shortcuts, but sometimes you don't remember them. So next major tip is um, keyboard shortcuts and basically rearranging it to fit how you work. So if I remember correctly, uh, a lot of the default commands for Affinity Photo, for example, were like brush size. It was like the right key or the left bracket and the right bracket to increase the brush size. I think uh, zooming in and out on the image was either I think it was like holding down command and hitting plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out then you had uh, if you're clone stamping you had to hold down the option key to uh, kind of select your source and then you could paint there space to move around then you had like B for brush and E for eraser and uh, some other things you want to make a new layer you had a command in I just felt that when I was working like that my hand was just constantly having to go back and forth. I'd have to adjust the brush size here and then come back to come sample from a brush and do some painting and then zoom in a bit and come. And my hand was just going back and forth way more than I wanted it to. So I wanted to create all the keys where my hand could just stay in one place. And that's what I did. So for me, what I've got is I have my brush size. Uh, brush size increase decrease set to F and G. I guess F is like fewer, so fewer pixels, smaller brush. Uh, G, you're gaining pixels, so bigger brush is just how I remember it. So here I can increase my brush size, big or smaller. And if I want to zoom in, I just go right above to T, the telephoto to zoom in, I guess. And then R for, I don't know, go back. <laughs> well, I don't know why, just but R because they're right next to each other. Zoom in, zoom out. Y is going to fill the screen. And then I'm still all right here. So you can see I've zoomed in. I can hold the space bar to move around. I can increase the brush size. I can still like um, sample from different areas that I want to sample from. Increase the brush size. Maybe zoom out a bit. Go to the left. Fill the screen. Maybe change to a brush. I'm hitting B now and change to a brush tool. I can paint with a brush tool. I can go back to my clone stamp by pressing S. I can sample from right here. And now we can sample that. Um, I've got H being my healing brush, J is my in painting brush tool, and I just bypassed the whole command in general and just said in to bring up a new layer uh, because I just don't want to have to do command in, in brings a new layer. Uh, M makes a mask, that's what I did for mask, and I think those are the main ones that I use, but the nice thing about it is I don't have to move my hand around. I can basically work like this. And you can see that I can do stuff here. I can paint. I can move in, move out. Uh, I do wish there was keys that you could move up and down the layer stack. Uh, currently in Affinity Photo, you can't. So when I do want to switch to a new layer, I do have to come back to this menu, switch to a new layer, and work on it. I do wish, or I do hope eventually that they will let you do that. So if you want to find where you can change your keyboard things, you go to File. Uh, prefer sorry, affinity photo preferences and you go to the main user interface and you got keyboard shortcuts right here and they're all assigned pretty logically uh, you can look up here you've got the main um, what are they, what are they called personas liquefy develop panorama and then below that you've got file edit text which these are going to match the menus that you're going to see uh, at the top of the screen so if you want to for example you want to assign a shortcut key to something like i don't know you know blur gauss and blur or something possibly i think you might be able to do that you can go here preferences uh, and that was under filters right filters and there you go blur gauss and blur and you can assign make your own keyboard shortcut key for that and then whenever you want just press boom like maybe we could do like command g let's try that if i do command double click on it to change it i guess there you go and it's a tell it tells me right now that uh command g is already assigned to the group command so we're not going to do that but you understand how it goes you could do that for all you for any kind of tool that you want, especially ones that you use quite frequently. So if you know you're using Gauss and Blur all the time, or you're using uh, frequency separation, or you're using something else, it's best just to like assign a really quick keyboard shortcut key to that, and especially somewhere where you're not having to constantly move your hand back and forth. So that's another tip that I use, and I do recommend uh, get those keyboard shortcuts down get them efficient, get them working for you. And I like that I, when I use my F key, it has this little indention, this little bump on the F key, so I can always kind of feel, 
okay, I'm on the F key and now my hands are kind of spaced where they need to be, where I can just zoom in, zoom out, small, big, zoom to fit, and just do everything really, really efficiently. Uh, another thing, and I've had a few people ask me about this. They've said, hey, I noticed in your brushes you have a retouching folder. Um, I don't see that on my Affinity Photo. Well, that's because I made it customly. And it's pretty simple to do. All you're going to do is come over here and you're going to say create a new category. And we can just say it's going to come up saying brushes by default. But once you that comes up, it should be empty. And then you can go to rename category and we'll just call this BRG brush shiz. Hit OK. And now what you can do is you can come over here and you can say let's make a brand new like round brush. And we give it a, a default round brush. Right now I have this blue color selected, but here's a brush. And then you can come over here and right click on it to bring up this little menu here and hit edit brush. And now, like, so you know, for example, I love using 2% uh, flow brushes for my uh, dodging and burning. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and maybe bring this down to like 2%. You can mess with the spacing, how you think is going to work. Uh, best for you. I'll have to look at my settings. I don't remember on um, my other one. You can do a brush size and I think something like that is going to be fine. I don't really mess with anything else. Uh, there are certain brushes where I will do dynamics, but I think for this one we don't need it. And then we can close that and now we can rename that brush. So we can say rename that brush and we can call this 2% uh, flow. And there you go. And now when I hide it over it, you'll see that it says 2% flow. And basically you can just do that as often as you want. And you can make a new round brush and it's going to give you a new one. You can do one at 3%, 5%, uh, 100% opacity, hardness, things like that. So that is the way that you can, uh, and also the hardness should be zero, right? Something like that. And that is the way you can kind of create your own uh, custom brush menu so that you can work a lot faster and that way I've already got my 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% hardness, 100%, 0% hardness brushes and I'm not having to actually mess with these little sliders up here. You know, you, might have, you don't have to come up here and go, okay, how do I get to 2% and let's go to hardness 100. I've already got a bunch of custom brushes set for that so that's another really useful tip. And uh, I've talked about this. I've talked about this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go over it in detail. But definitely creating your own macros and having your own library. So you notice here that I've got uh, macros you've seen me use before. I've got my retouch suite. I've got one just for dodge and burn. If I want to bring a dodge and burn layer, I can just click on that. Let's actually click it on again. Click on it here. And uh, I will tell you that uh, still a bug is Affinity Photos like macros. Sometimes they will click on, sometimes they won't. And they clicked me like three of them. But there I've got dodge and burn and I click on that macro and boom, it already brings up a folder called dodge and burn. They're already labeled and ready to go. They're already inverted. All I got to do is start painting on them. Uh, I've got one called a color grading suite where, let me turn that off, where I click on that and it just brings up all my main color grading tools, gradient map, color balance, color adjustments, uh, curve, selective color, all in a folder called color grading. So I can do that right away. I also have some that I use for Instagram import. So I know this is already set for the uh, appropriate uh, width of Instagram. So I can do a tall Instagram. And what that's going to do is if it does it, there you go. Is it basically resized it to Instagram's maximum uh, resolution, which is 1350 across and 1080, sorry, 1080 across 1350 up and down. That way uh, I, it's a one for one pixel uh, for Instagram and I don't have to worry about Instagram adding too much of its own compression. And then at this point, uh, it also added some noise and a little bit of an unsharp mask to just kind of make it look a bit sharper for Instagram. So there's all kind of things you can do with macros. Maybe uh, if you're curious, I'll make another video on macros, but I did have a video on how to do my BRG retouch suite in Affinity Photo, so you can go ahead and watch that. But uh, that's gonna be it. I think it's just a really quick video. I just wanted to share some of the tips that I use to really help speed up uh, my workflow and my working process within Affinity Photo. That way, I'm just my I'm not wasting time, you know, moving through menus, looking for menus, moving my hand up and on the keyboard, moving too much. I can work really efficiently. I can stay right here, and I can just do pretty much everything I need to do. Pull up a menu, and I am good to go. 
All right, uh, so hope you enjoyed this video. It was short, a little bit different. Uh, the next video will be coming soon, and uh, I've got some more images to work on, so I will see you then. But until then, thanks, guys, for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time. All right, guys, later.